All right, everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make this. This is my favorite splicing tool for using on Amsteel, Dynaglide, Zingit, you name it. It is a simple wire that has bent into a loop. This bend is not a sharp bend, it's got some curvature to it, so it doesn't just uh, jab the individual strands. What makes it magical is this plastic handle here, which I actually made myself. Very easy to make, that's what I'm going to show you how to make. I make it out of this steel wire, pretty thin diameter, it's picture hanging wire, you can get it at any hardware store for a couple of bucks. The wire, I start out with, I don't know, maybe two feet of wire. I'm just going to bend it in half, and again, don't want to make a, a sharp crimp at the end there, I want to leave it with some curvature. On this end, I want to give the plastic something to bite onto something to ooze around so that the wire doesn't just pull out. So I'm just going to bend some arbitrary shapes here, something that when the plastic is molded around it, it just holds it in place. And the plastic handle is made out of these pellets here. There's a couple of different brand names. This is Polymorph. Um, basically, it's just a really low melting point plastic. This will melt at around 140 Fahrenheit or 60 Celsius and uh, the hotter you go just the more gooey it gets when you melt it. Those are temperatures very easily achieved in your kitchen. If you're in America water boils around 212 degrees Fahrenheit the rest of the world has 100 degrees Celsius. Either way it's plenty hot to melt the polymorph. I'm gonna take my one ounce of polymorph. This is gonna be actually kind of a big handle. I'm just going to dump it in the water. And you'll notice pretty soon here that the pellets are going to start turning a clear color. This water temperature that I have is 158 degrees, 160. You can see now all the pellets have turned clear. I'm just going to stir them around with my fork to make sure they're all melted. They are, so I'm going to remove it from the hot water. Now this is hot. The water is the most dangerous part here. The water can burn you. The plastic doesn't really conduct heat fast enough to burn your skin. So I'm just going to be careful, get that water off of there. After the water's off, it's pretty, pretty easy to play with. Now this is a lot like Play-Doh. This is Play-Doh for adults. You can mold it into any shape you like, and then when it cools down, it'll harden and create that object for you. So I'm going to take my wire. I've bent those loops on the end to hold the plastic in place. And I'm just going to stick it in there and mold it on. And that's basically all there is to it. You can take a little bit of time here to shape the plastic how you'd like. I normally go with a T-handle, just the way that I hold my splicing tool like this. It, it's a pretty comfortable grip. I like to just squeeze it in my hand a little bit to, to give it a shape that my hand likes and then maybe smooth out the wrinkles a little bit. And there's a new splicing tool. Really simple, really easy to make. Um, pretty inexpensive too. Now as this cools, this will start to turn back to an opaque white color. It can take quite a while to cool after it's been formed into this solid mass. You can dip that in some cold water if you want to accelerate it, or you can just set it aside and wait. This handle here was made from that pre-measured packet of one ounce of polymorph, that's 28 grams. Um, Volume wise, the pellets come out to about three tablespoons or 40 milliliters. It's a pretty substantial handle at, at one ounce. You can see really large in the hand, which is great for when you really need to tug on that splicing. This handle here was made with three quarters of an ounce or maybe, maybe 20, 18 grams. A um, little bit smaller in the hand, but still, still sufficient. Another really cool thing about this plastic is that it is reusable. Um, all I'd have to do is dunk this back into the hot water and wait for it to melt. Because it is a big solid mass, it is going to take some time for that to melt. 
much longer than the pellets did, but once it's melted, it's reusable to your heart's content. It's not the world's strongest plastic. It's kind of soft. You can scratch it with your fingernail. I wouldn't use it for anything structural, but if you need to add a handle to something, if you want to make a little device that hangs off of your ridge line, um, any number of options. If you just want to try out a shape for something that you're going to make out of a different material later, this is some pretty cool stuff to work with. Highly recommend it. So using the splicing tool is very simple. If you've ever used a bent wire before, it's exactly the same. You just poke through the M steel, open up the wire just enough to get the end of the tail in, and then just pull it through. I'm making a continuous loop here. We'll stick the tail through. Then pull it on out. Bearing the tips is very similar. Just gonna stick the end of the tool in the rope. it on up the hollow braid and exit right right near the tail there stick the tail in the eye and pull it through one more time. Open up the braid. Stick the eye in the braid up through. Exit right near the tail. Grab the rope. And pull it through. And there is a continuous loop using a homemade splicing tool.